We're going to be going over how to use AI to scrape the internet for real-time data. This is something that ChatGBT cannot do on its own. So pretty cool workaround. Uh, we'll use a SERP agent from Wang Chang, and I'll go ahead and demo you how this is going to work real quick. So we have this website, Octopart. It has thousands and thousands of computer parts that I don't know a whole lot about, and it has information about each one. And let's see if we can't get our SERP agent to return us some data about it. Let's see. Select some of these. And we'll get a microchip. We'll get from this distributor. So you can see we have this product, information about it, and we'll see if we can return some of it using our AI agent. So let's ask what is... The mounting type of let's see let's get the product number by digikey so let's see if it can return that answer okay it got surface mounts let's see that is correct surface mount let's ask it one more just to be sure and ask the voltage type and it got 2.7 to 5.5 and it is 2.7 to 5.5 so pretty cool uh, now note I'm not even feeding this the website it's supposed to get the data from it automatically goes and searches the entire web and finds the answers I just knew where it was getting it from so I'm able to show you guys now this is not going to be a beginner tutorial for coding so if you don't have any coding experience this might be a little difficult but let's go ahead and get into it so we have a Next.js app over here and we have one file that has our UI and one file that is running our agent so we'll go ahead and start from scratch we'll write this function over but I'm gonna leave in the classes that Lang Chang has provided us they're very specific and I don't want to mess with them too much you can go ahead and copy them from Lang Chang's website over here. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and link this in the description just to make it easy, and you can go ahead and copy and paste that. But let's get into writing our actual function. So, export default. It's going to be async that we'll call handler. It's going to take our rec res. any and the first thing let's spell async correctly the first thing we're gonna do is define our question that's gonna get passed in and we'll just get that from the request body question and then we can get started with the rest so we'll define our model now make sure you have your environment variable set up for OpenAI and SERP you're gonna need both those make sure those are set up correctly and we'll define our temperature here. We'll give it zero. We don't want any creativity. And then we can define our tools, which is going to be our SERP. And in here, we're going to define SERP API, and we'll pass in our environment variable that we set up. I think I called mine SERP API underscore API underscore key. Now that's going to want to take in a location, a language, and geographical location. So we'll go ahead and do that. Put in Austin, Texas, United States, and a language, English, and geographical location of U.S. And that should be our tool set up correctly. So now we can get into our actual chain. So we'll do new LLM chain. And then we'll pass it our prompt, which we're going to get new custom prompt template. Nope. Prompt template like this. And it's going to take in our tool or tools, you can have multiple. And we'll pass in the input variables, which are going to be our input and agent scratch pad. So input and 
agent scratch pad. Like so. And then after that, give it a comma here and we'll define our model like so. And then our chain is set up. Now we can go ahead and create our agent. So we'll do const agent equals new. Oh, single action agent. And this will take in the chain that we just made as well as an output parser from new custom. Now these are these custom classes we were talking about earlier, which I would not dive too deep into. Stop, and then we'll observation, backslash, and observation. Backslash, and observation. After we have the agent set up, we can get our executioner going. Executioner. Sorry, executor, not executioner. <laughs> New agent executor. And this will take in our agents as well as our tools. And then we should be good with that. And then we'll go ahead and try to run our function. So const results. This is where we'll call the executor. Eight, um, actually call. And this is where it'll take in that question from our front end. And we'll res.status 200. Dot JSON, and we'll get our answer from result.output. Like so. Then we'll catch any errors like this. And we'll just res.status out. I don't want a console log right now. But if you are running into issues, obviously add in your console logs to help you debug. We'll just do something went wrong. Okay, and that is your agent fully set up. Now, not too bad, uh, pretty easy once you get the hang of things. And you can already see that there's lots of different ways that you can utilize this with the amount of tools that can be passed into one agent. So worth looking into, but let's go ahead and get into our front end. We'll get rid of this and we'll just write from scratch. I am going to leave the return just because it has a lot of CSS and other stuff that we don't really need to cover in this video. And we'll get straight into the logic and we'll set up our state variables. We'll have a question as well as an answer. So if question, set the question to string. Same for our answer. Now that we have those setups, we are good to move on. Let's set up our function that's going to handle the request. So we'll call it ask question. It's going to be async. Parentheses. So ask question, and then we're actually just going to get right into the try. Uh, I'm not going to do any conditionals really. Just to save time, so we'll do const res equals await. And we'll use fetch method to reach our API. And ours is called serp agent. Yours might be something different. It's whatever this file is called. Uh, so just be sure that that's correct or you run into problems. And then we'll pass in our parameters. Start with the method as post. And we'll pass in our headers, which are going to be content type of application 
JSON. And then we'll pass in our body, which is going to be JSON stringify and whatever the question we get is sorry question okay now I'm gonna again skip conditional this is might where you want to set another conditional just to check if everything's working correctly we're gonna skip over that and just do our res oh but res dot Jason equals res.json. This should actually be within our try catch. Let's move that up. So we have that. And then this is where we'll set our answer. To whatever data. And then I believe it will be answer. Just like so. And then after that, we just catch an error and we should be good to go. Catch error. Console error. And that is it. And we are all set up to run our SERP. Let's go ahead and give it a quick test again. Let's see. Well, let's just see if it can keep getting the same result after we've changed all the code. So we'll just go ahead and actually use one of the ones we already used. And there you go. You can see it got 2.7 and 5.5, so that is correct. So pretty cool use case. Again, this is a very, very simple use case. This can do a lot more things. Um, just get creative with it, and it's pretty crazy what you can actually do with this. Like always, if you want to see any more tutorials or have specific questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments, and I'll try to get to those. And again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.